Okay, I think it's uh, five o'clock. So I'm going to open up the meeting by saying that welcome everyone who's ever who's ever actually uh, doing this. I see a couple of names down below there. That uh, to our uh, Wenham Board of Selectmen, uh, Thursday, May 14, 2020. Uh, board of Selectmen meeting at 5 p.m. I think Diane Booker wants me to say these words, so when she archives this stuff, it'll make it easier for her to... So that uh, we have uh, three Selectmen here, and that uh, we only have one agenda item, uh, which is uh, resident survey results presentation by Great Blue Research, Inc., which is assigned to Captain Car Harrison by popular demand. <laughs> Well, this is really um, not in my hands, but um, I am very excited to hear this presentation that we're about to hear. Uh, I imagine we may have some questions, but um, I'm hoping that especially now when communications to our community, to our residences, may be more important than ever, that we may learn a few things from this that will help us. So I, I don't so. know um, who wants to introduce Dan Quattrocelli, but... Um, I think that's your job, Catherine. Okay, well, thank you for being here, Dan, and uh, we'll turn it over to you um, to, for the presentation. Do you want us to wait until the end for questions? Um, yeah, that might be easiest. Um, we can just take questions at the end. What I'll try to do is um, I'm gonna give a good high level overview of uh, each of the survey questions that were contained within the report. Um, we'll be able to go over those results and then yeah, I'll be able to field questions from the group uh, at the end there. Okay, great, thank you. It's all yours. Great, yeah, folks, thank you very much. So um, my name is Dan Quattrocelli. I'm a senior research director with Great Blue Research uh, in Glastonbury, Connecticut. And we were contracted to work on a residential satisfaction survey uh, on behalf of the town of Wenham. So what we'll do is I'll give you a brief overview of the project uh, before we start getting into the results of the report. So Jackie, can we go to the next slide, please? And one more, perfect. So a quick project overview. Uh, so we're commissioned on behalf of the town of Wenham uh, to conduct a residential satisfaction survey, uh, gain feedback regarding town programs, services, and priorities. Really wanted to understand uh, what residents' perceptions were of the town, and then to gain deeper understanding of their priorities uh, for town spending and initiatives. So to service this research goal, we employed both a telephone survey and a digital online survey. Uh, among a random sampling of residents living within the town of Wenham. The goal of this research on the uh, back end was hopefully to provide an understanding of the key drivers of why folks chose to at first live in Wenham and continue to live in Wenham, to understand residents' uh, perceptions of the town, and then identify areas of priority for town spending that align with residents' preferences. Next slide, please. So overall, looking at some of the areas of investigation contained within the study, we asked questions uh, centering on overall quality of life in Wenham, likelihood to recommend it as a place to live, the reasons for initially living and continuing to live in Wenham, satisfaction with various town services, preferred priorities for town spending, awareness of opportunities to become more involved with the town, preferred methods of communicating, perceived value of living in Wenham for the taxes paid and relative services received, awareness and perceptions of the structural budget deficit being faced by the town, and then a demographic profile of the respondents in the survey. Next slide, please. So to give a snapshot of the overall research methodology, as I mentioned, it's a telephone and online uh, mixed methodology study, a total of 406 completed surveys with 100, excuse me, 289 on the phone, 175 online. There were a total of just under 50 questions, but not every respondent answered every question. Uh, the nature of your responses would determine maybe some of the follow-up questions that came in the survey. So you only answered applicable questions. Uh, folks were not compensated for their participation. Uh, we utilized uh, a residential phone record sample and also posted the digital survey link on uh, the town website to gain the online surveys there, focusing specifically on residents living within the town of Wenham. The margin for error of the study is roughly 4.2%. So the idea here is that if we were to conduct this study again, 95 times out of 100, the results you'll see within this report would be within 4.2 percentage points. Uh, once we start getting outside of that 4.2%, uh, that's when you start to see a statistically significant difference among the numbers. 
For contextual purposes, we wanted to note that the research was conducted between the dates of February 17th and March 6th of 2020. And obviously with all going on in the world nowadays, uh, for contextual purposes, it's good to know those uh, explicit dates that the survey was being conducted. Next slide, please. So a brief overall research snapshot. Uh, so length of time living within town, uh, you see about one out of every four folks, 25.5% reported they lived in town for more than 30 years. While well, the majority of folks uh, refused to answer what their household income was, uh, you see that more than one out of every five respondents uh, makes between 100 to $200,000. And you have about an additional one out of every five that makes uh, either two to $300,000 or $300,000 or more. So uh, roughly 40 to 50% of your population self-reported as having an income of greater than $100,000. Age of the respondent, uh, skewed slightly older in the survey. Uh, you'll see that 18% between the ages of 65 to 74, 20.3% were between the ages of 55 to 64. And we had slightly more women than men fill out the survey, 55.2% female as opposed to 41.8% male. <clears throat> so we'll go on to slide eight, where we actually get into the, the meat of the report here. We started out looking at overall quality of life, and we asked respondents to rate the overall quality of life that they received in Wenham. Uh, roughly 95% of respondents reported that it's either excellent, 57.3%, or good, 37.9%. Uh, you'll see a very small number of folks reported that it's poor, uh, and less than 5% noted it's fair. We asked respondents to indicate an open-ended format question, what most strongly impacts quality of life in Wenham? And you'll see that roughly one out of every four respondents noted that it's either the town itself, that small town country feel, the character of the town, uh, it being quiet and clean. 28% uh, noted that was the primary reason. Uh, secondarily, good quality school system and education, 25.2% uh, was the second most frequently cited uh, reason that will impact quality of life in Wenham. Next slide, please. Impressively, you'll see that nine out of 10 respondents noted that they would be either very likely or somewhat likely to recommend uh, living in the town of Wenham. As an important follow-up question, you'll see that more than three out of every five respondents agree with the statement that Wenham is a good value for the taxes I pay and the services I receive, uh, where roughly one of every three respondents, 35.8% disagreed with that statement. Overall, very impressive numbers though, when you see that folks uh, believe that Wenham is a good value that for the taxes they pay and the relative services received, uh, and the strong majority would recommend it as a place to live. Next slide, please. So you'll see very similar reasons here for why folks initially chose to live in Wenham and why they continue to live in Wenham. Uh, top two reasons uh, across both questions were the quality of the school system and family friendliness and strength of the community. So what you see is that the school system is the initial draw as to why folks want to live in Wenham. 54.5% uh, of all respondents noted that that was the primary reason for why they chose to live in town was the quality of schools. Uh, but as you see, folks do live in town for longer periods of time. So in addition to the quality of the school system, it's that family friendliness and the strength of community, um, that sense of town that really keeps folks wanting to stay here, that 42.2%. But what you do see, is that those top two reasons uh, were similar across the board with family friendliness and quality of schools. Um, you also see safety as a very important characteristic there by roughly one out of every five to one out of every four respondents. Uh, in addition to having that family connection here, uh, whether they were born here or whether they have family in the area. Next slide, please. Conversely, we wanted to ask folks what would cause them to move from one to another town in Massachusetts or another state. Uh, the high property tax rate noted by 55.2% of respondents would be the primary driver that would cause them to move out of town. Uh, overall affordability of living, 30% of respondents noted that would be the instance there, followed by 19% who noted that state taxes would cause them to move. In a follow-up, we wanted to ask folks how uh, far in the future they would potentially anticipate moving out of Wenham, or at least moving out of their current home. You'll note that roughly one half of respondents noted that it would be within the next 10 years, whether that's 4.3% within the next year, 9.7% within the next two years, 15.7% within the next five years, or that 20.3% within the next 10 years. So overall, that comes out to roughly uh, just under 50% of the total population there. For those folks that indicated they 
potentially would move out of town within the next five years. We want to know whether they were likely to stay in Wenham and just downsize or change their type of dwelling or whether they were inclined to move out of town. Uh, you'll notice that roughly three out of four respondents noted that they would leave the town of Wenham, uh, where roughly one in five, 19.6% indicated they would stay within town. Next slide, please. We offered up a, a list of town services and programs to residents and wanted to understand their relative level of satisfaction or dissatisfaction with each. Uh, impressively, you'll see that more than four of every five residents noted that they were either very or somewhat satisfied with each of these characteristics. Uh, impressively, 99.1% noted being very or somewhat satisfied with library services. And you'll see high percent 90 satisfaction ratings for the majority of these characteristics. Uh, impressively, even the lowest rated characteristic at planning and zoning services uh, at 82.8% is still a very solid metric there. We mentioned that folks uh, among those that were dissatisfied with one or more of the town services, we asked them uh, in a follow-up question to indicate the reason for their dissatisfaction. Uh, the primary areas really centered on a sense that the school system was mismanaged or inefficient, whether it was around budget uh, or resources that they have on hand. Secondarily, tying into an infrastructure, public works type perspective was poorly maintained roads or sidewalks. Um, third aspect was lack of recreational services, activities, or community events. But impressively here, you'll see that the strong majority of all town residents were very or somewhat satisfied with all of these uh, town programs. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So we asked folks in, in a forward thinking question um, of all the issues that are theoretically facing the town, uh, what they would prioritize as the top three that the town should focus on. Number one, uh, you saw that preserving open space, 45.3% of respondents, that was their top choice, followed by preserving town character, 42.2%. The third selection was developing a greater variety of commercial industry types at 41.1%. So those three characteristics uh, really showed a different uh, plateau among the rest of the uh, response options as those were all over that 40% threshold. Uh, whereas you see a little drop off until you get to improving local infrastructure uh, at 31.9% and then another additional drop to the next plateau once you get to the mid 20% uh, among increasing places for leisure activities um, or exploring regional services. So you see among those issues that the town of Wenham should focus on, you do see that those um, Couple top two aligning together with res uh, preserving open space, preserving town character. Uh, that third option is a little slightly different than the first two when you do think of the idea of um, developing a greater variety of commercial, uh, commercial industry types within town, which goes a little bit away from the, the current sentiment of that uh, residential small town feel that is in place. Next slide, please. We asked folks uh, whether they have previously attended the town meeting and then whether they would plan to attend this year. You'll see that roughly 37.5%, so nearly two out of every five, uh, they have attended and they plan to do so in the future. Uh, however, you'll see that 28.9% uh, do not attend and then do not have any interest in attending in the future. The ones that where you could kind of bring them on board are the folks in the yellow uh, who do not regularly attend town meetings, but they would plan to attend this year's meeting, 22.4%. Uh, the ones that would be of concern are the 6.9% who have attended uh, but do not plan to attend this year's meeting. Primary way to make it easier for folks to get involved uh, is just providing more information on the front end, uh, providing more communication and advertising of the dates, agenda items, issues and topics that are going to be discussed, uh, and then just disseminating the information out there to residents uh, more readily available. Next slide, please. As you'll see here, slightly less than half of respondents, uh, roughly two out of every five, uh, reported that they were aware of uh, the Town of Wenham Citizen Leadership Academy. Among those folks that were aware, that 40.9%, you'll see that only one out of every five, 20% has actually attended the Citizens Leadership Academy within the past year. When we look for suggestions as to uh, what could be done to make it uh, easier and increase the likelihood for residents to attend the Citizens Leadership Academy, I uh, get it tied into communication of just providing some more information um, and getting more uh, methods out there with the content to make folks aware of this offering. Uh, you will see that there are that 13.1% of respondents who just indicated that they're busy with other life obligations and just wouldn't have the time to participate. 
Next slide, please. Impressively here you see uh, nearly three, or three out of every four respondents, 70.9%, uh, do recall seeing, hearing, uh, or reading any communication from the town of Wenham itself. Uh, folks are primarily going to the town website for that communication, 42.2% uh, indicated they have gone to the town website, followed by 41% that have uh, received contact via mail. Social media is another primary uh, vehicle where folks are getting information on the town, 37.7% there. Uh, you do see a little drop off to 27% once you get down to folks receiving information from the local newspaper. Additionally, roughly one of every five respondents uh, noted that they have received information uh, via direct email. Next slide, please. We then asked folks to look at different types of information and ask them where they currently go to for that type of information and where they would prefer to go to for that information. And you'll see that for day-to-day -day issues, folks currently go to the town website as the primary vehicle, followed by a social media channel. As their preferred method to get information on day-to-day -day town issues, they would still like to go to the website, but you will see that folks do have a preference for email communication there. So if there was gonna be a potential change in communication for more day-to-day -day issues, it could be emailed out to folks in addition to having uh, the website still be used. For more budgetary or long-term planning strategic type initiatives, uh, you still see the, the website as the primary current preferred method, 42.5%. Uh, but you do see a slight shift there uh, among the future preferred methods where folks would prefer to receive an email contact uh, regarding budgetary or long-term planning initiatives uh, with the secondary source they would prefer as the town website. So what you do see here is a little shift of uh, a little more passive to a active switch where folks would almost just want to be emailed the information directly whether rather than having to go to the website or a social media channel to, to gather the information. Next slide, please. Primary content and pieces of information that folks would want to receive from the town. Uh, nearly three out of every four respondents would want information on upcoming town events. More than two out of every three would want information on town services. Three out of every five would want information on town meetings. And more than half would want information on town elections. Folks would look for this information at least once a month. Um, roughly one half of folks, 46.1%, uh, would prefer to receive this information from the town once a month. Whereas you see 24.1%, uh, one of every four residents would like to receive this information weekly. Uh, so at a base effort, um, information should be at least be getting out there once a month, uh, potentially even up to once a week uh, for some of those folks who might want it more frequently, obviously depending on the nature of the content being disseminated. Next slide, please. As you'll see here, we asked some questions about the town website and three out of every four respondents, 75.6% uh, reported that they have visited the town's website in the past year. Folks primarily visit the town's website for general information on Wenham. In addition to trying to get important documents and information such as the annual town report, uh, town bylaw information, financial or budgetary related documents, um, meetings, minutes from a uh, board of selectmen meetings, uh, things of that nature. Folks also go to the website for the calendar of meetings and upcoming events, and also to get information on recent news. You also see that one out of every five respondents uh, noted that they do go to the website to pay their local taxes. So folks do go to the website for a number of different uh, resources. Uh, in addition to just getting information on the town uh, or things that are upcoming, they do it for uh, archival information, then also to take care of some of their services as well. Next slide, please. We see here that the majority of folks, uh, nearly three out of every five, 57.8%, uh, prior to the survey were aware that the town of Wenham was experiencing a structural deficit. In the opinion of respondents, what the town should do to try to uh, mitigate that is cut town personnel and non-critical resources. 21.5% of respondents feel as though that should be the, the primary method taken moving forward, followed closely by implementing a trash fee. 19.1% of respondents indicated that would be uh, the preferred way to try to get out of the structural deficit. What we also see is 13.5% see it as being a combined effort of a smaller trash fee combined with a smaller tax override, um, and then also some potential other changes 
of uh, putting a more fiscally responsible administration or implementing a tax override of more than 2.5%. We did ask folks uh, in respect to the trash fee question, uh, the amount that they would be willing to pay per quarter in trash fees. And you'll see that nearly one out of every three respondents, 23.5% noted that they'd be willing to pay between 20 to $30. Uh, whereas you'll get about 15% noted that they'd be willing, excuse me, about 20% would be willing to pay more than 30, whether it's 30 to 40, 40 to 50 or 50 or more. Uh, so what you do see there is it's about uh, two out of every five folks, um, slightly less than half reported that they would be willing to pay an additional amount uh, per quarter for trash fees. Uh, whereas you see 38.6% reported explicitly they would not wanna pay anything. And 17.5% were unsure of how much they would want to pay. Next slide, please. So that brings us to, to the end of the, uh, the graphs and tables. Um, we have some high level considerations based off the findings to kind of summarize uh, some of these items. Uh, primarily what we saw was an increase in community wide events and activities. Um, we see that people do like the town of Wenham for its town character uh, and the sense of self and camaraderie that it gives. So we're applicable trying to help build off that strong sense of town pride and community um, with more town wide events and activities would be beneficial. Also looking at targeting residents preferred communication methods depending on what type of content they're looking to receive. Uh, so as we noted, email a town website and social media uh, were the preferred methods for day-to-day -day issues, whereas for the budgetary, strategic, long-term initiatives, uh, email, town website, and direct mail were the primary methods. So very much targeting uh, that, those types of communication depending on the content being disseminated. Uh, will help get the information out to folks and hopefully increase their retention of it as well. Another potential area of consideration, and this kind of straddled the line a little bit, where folks did note that they want to see more commercial development in town, um, whereas they would be leaving the town of Wenham for a lot of their shopping or leisure type activities. Um, however, they do like the sense of uh, community and the sense of feel in town. So the idea is really to try to potentially look at um, implementing more commercial development, but doing it in a targeted sense of things that are going to fit into the feel of town. Um, so you think of when you leave town hall and you walk up the street there, you have a, a couple of restaurants, um, smaller shops, bakeries, coffee shops that really do have the feel of town as opposed to when you go a little further um, into South Hamilton, um, when you see a, a Dunkin' Donuts right away. So making sure that offering potentially some, some more commercial development, but making sure that they align with the feel of the town of Wenham uh, would be important as well. So that brings us to the end of the presentation. I'll open it up to the group and we can go back to any slide for any questions. This is Jack Willow, I have a question for you. Um, uh, by the way, first of all, uh, this is I think very, very informative and in that uh, I was surprised by some of the respondents and that uh, I wasn't surprised by the 38.6% people who don't wanna pay any more in trash. But uh, oh, there's lots of uh, information here that we could uh, improve our communication to town folks. So my question is that, uh, how do these results compare to other small towns in Essex if you've been engaged to do such a similar survey? Yes, yeah, so I would say that the quality of life numbers line up very highly or very much aligned with what we see on the North Shore of Massachusetts. Um, we've done some studies recently with town of Danvers. Um, so a lot of the, is there's a higher quality of life for what we see in Massachusetts in general, um, in addition to the greater Boston area, whether it's North Shore or South Shore. Uh, so we see a lot of the satisfaction uh, numbers aligning with what we see in Massachusetts area. Um, however, these numbers, when you look at overall satisfaction with the town, likelihood to recommend to another individual, uh, those numbers in the 90 percentile are all above what we see in other municipalities. Um, generally, you'll always see there are folks dissatisfied with what they're paying for taxes and receiving and relative services. Uh, so that metric was higher than what we see across the board for a lot of other utility or for municipalities as well. What we do see is the communication methods uh, do align with what we see with a lot of the other municipalities where folks do want to either A, have information that's standing available on the website but then also feel as though they're being distributed the information directly via email. So it's kind of a two-pronged approach of it needs to sit somewhere 
actively where if folks want to go and dig out the information themselves, they can go to the website and find it. Um, but then also for lack of a better term, it needs to kind of be spoon fed to folks as well via direct email. So I think from the, the scores that we've seen for Wenham throughout the survey are at, if not above the level of what we see for other municipalities uh, in North Shore, Massachusetts. Um, and, and the communication methods and preferences do line up there as well. I have one more question before I turn it over to my colleagues. So, uh, was there any statistic or uh, measurement that surprised you? I, I think a little bit of what surprised me is, is the, the variance in managing the town feel versus commercial development. Um, and I think what you might get there is uh, a binary, if we did some cross-tab follow-up and we looked at the, the age of respondent, um, you might see a, a younger type respondent that has young kids might want a little more activities in town. Um, but that's one of those things where I think some of the, the variants that we saw in that particular area of wanting to preserve the open space and town feel, but then folks also prioritizing commercial development, it really boils down to just the, the type of development explicitly. Um, overall, I think the idea that you have about uh, half of folks would still be willing to pay a trash fee um, surprised me a little bit because the idea of folks generally won't want to pay any additional money for anything when it comes to their taxes or for a town service, um, especially something that they're already receiving. So I think that was a, a little bit of a, a surprising finding there as well. Well, thank you very much, uh, Catherine. You are, you're next. Okay, um, Dan, I wanted to thank you again and um, everyone who worked on this. Um, it's a, it's um, something, citizens engagement is something that's really important to me. And I think this gives us, it confirms a lot of what I think we thought we knew um, and brings some new information. So great job with all of that. Very I just, appreciate. sure. I just have one question. Um, and it has to do with something you actually just said. So we, um, I'm in looking at the slide that talks about what you know, what kind of um, communication people prefer. It, I'm wondering if it's possible to break that uh, that question down by demographic or by age, because the demographic was a little skewed, which is interesting, um, but. I think, I have a feeling, and maybe I'm wrong, that different ages, age groups, would like different kinds of communication. Um, and it would be helpful, I think, if we, ha if we could easily get, um, sort of rear dig deeper into that data and know more about that. Absolutely, yeah. So that'd be slide 17 of the report, the email and website preferred methods of communication. Uh, what we can yeah. do as a follow-up is we can take those current and preferred methods for day-to-day -day issues and budget long-term planning initiatives. And what we can do is we can take those metrics and then break them down based off of those age groups that we showed you on the residential uh, demographic snapshot. And then we'll be able to show you, uh, for example, town website um, as the current method, what the breakout was for all the various age groups uh, relative to uh, local newspaper, for example. So then we can more granularly see the differences among the different uh, age demographic segments. That's absolutely a follow-up we can run for you. Okay, and it's, it is partly, you know, um, the age breakup of what people are looking at now, but it's, for me, um, also really would be important to know what they would prefer by age. So where we have the you know, preferred method of communication. Absolutely. Um, that's what I think could be the most useful to us in gauging how we should, in, you know, communicate. So that's really my only uh, question. It was very clear, very easy to read, nice graphics. Um, I'm a marketing person, so I can look at that kind of stuff and it, it was well done. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, we, we tried to do a little mix of uh, text mm -hmm. graphs um, and, and try to make, because I know the, Statistical data can get a little ethereal and, and tough to wrap your head around. So we try to make it where stats folks can understand it, but I, I hate to use the word layman, but it, pretty much anybody we'd like to think can pick up our report and, and understand the, the content and the story that we're trying to tell. Yep. So I appreciate that feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'll second what Kathy said about the presentation. It's very easy to understand and read almost immediately. Mm -hmm. So do you have any more, have any questions? I'm sorry, not anymore. Any questions that uh, of concerns or 
comments? John. Oh, 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 sorry, I didn't know you were talking to me. Okay. Um, I First of all, I, I want to compliment you folks very highly because they actually caught me at home and did the survey with me. And I thought they, your, your personnel handled themselves extremely well and were very good at communicating to get out the best of responses uh, possible. So that also uh, feeds right into what Catherine was talking about, uh, Jack, uh, with the results. Uh, you know, it's, it's trash in, trash out, or if you do quality, uh, it's gonna be a, a different result. Um, so, and I agree with Catherine on the uh, importance of communication. It's probably been my, my longest, longest uh, fuss with how does this board communicate with, uh, with the town folks. And, you know, the newspaper has kind of gone away uh, for the most part. Uh, so if there was a, a more detailed breakdown, both as Catherine said, by demographics, as well as by uh, type, uh, is, and where might it be going in the future, uh, would be very, very helpful for us. No, absolutely, so we'll do is, we'll look at those communication pieces, we'll run those uh, current and preferred methods based on the different demographic segments. Uh, we can also do is look at some of the other communication related questions, uh, such as types of information folks would prioritize, um, how frequently they want to receive content. Uh, we can add some of those other questions in there um, to run some cross tabs there based on the demographics. So we'll get that uh, follow up as well, but um, very much appreciate the feedback on the nature of your call interaction. Um, as we kind of tell our call center staff, it's, it's myself and our project managers and our business development team that interacts with you all. Um, but we only really have maybe three, four people as a point of contact, whereas our research staff is surveying hundreds of people, um, having contact with hundreds more who are declining to take the survey. Um, so we really tell our call center staff that they are our front line um, and they are the best representation of who we are. So um, very much appreciate that, that positive feedback there. And I'll gladly pass along to her staff. So very much uh, appreciated there. Yeah, very, they're very patient. Uh, I, I found that uh, quite enjoyable. Not that they wasted time, but they were patient and they, and they wanted to make sure they understood you. So thank you so much for, for the uh, report because I did read through most of it and it is very easy to, uh, to read. And I think it's gonna be very valuable to us. Great, thank you, John. Great. So, uh, Anthony, uh, do you have any questions of uh, the uh, surveyor? Anthony, I don't. Yeah, I'm sorry, I had to unmute myself. Dan, no, thank you. I I appreciate everything you've done uh, for us and working with our team to make this uh, a reality. And um, of course, it wouldn't have been possible without the uh, funding through the Community Compact Grant. So, very much appreciative towards um, uh, the governor's office and Lieutenant Governor for allowing us to. Uh, have the funding to to uh, to do this, so uh, it was great. Thank you. I think it's very helpful. Yeah, very much appreciate it. And then, if, if you guys ever need any, um, obviously, once the COVID situation quiets down a little bit, um, it'll feel nice to get out of the house. So, if you all ever need an in-person presentation <laughs> or anything like that, um, more than willing to come up there. It's easy enough. But that may be that may be a very problem. good suggestion, Jack, because um, you know it would be helpful for the. Uh, the town folks, the residents, to understand more about the survey and what the uh, what it's like in comparison to what they personally feel. So, Anthony, can we put this on our website? Mm. You certainly can. Yeah. Uh, I would also like uh, uh, some hard copies. Uh, uh, I, for one, I'm sure the other selectmen would like one too. I'd like to go back and read this again and again and again uh, to remind myself of some of the things we could be changing that would be uh, constructive as, uh, as encouraged in this report. The other selectmen feel the same way. Sure. Yes, I do too. I have one actually, Jack. Well, if, you, if Catherine doesn't feel that way, we'll say one. No, I, well, I have it online, certainly, but. Um, uh, I, I, I'd like to flip through it. It <laughs> is nice to have something like this in, in paper. We can get a hard copy. We'll make sure you, it's in your mailbox. Okay, and, and I think um, because of our, situation, world situation, there might not be as many people paying attention to this um, in Wenham as might otherwise be. So anything yes. that we can do to get this information out to folks um, and to let people know that 
we're interested in following through on some of the thing, these things in the next you know, coming weeks, months, I think would be great. I think taking advantage of what Dan offered and maybe coming back when, when we are able to be in person um, might be a great idea when we have some, uh, uh, some more people. Right now, I know that uh, there's a school committee meeting going on and a lot of people are in there, but yeah, Dan, if you would do that at a later time, I, I think that uh, we'd all appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think it's, it's a great thing to have, I mean, just the, the unbiased third party Mm -hmm. um, kind of they're presenting the results, especially when, when you're giving good news. Um, if you're, if you're giving bad news, folks know that you're not cooking the books at all or anything like that. Um, but the joke I give folks is like, if I run home and tell my wife, like, Hey, my doctor said I'm in great shape versus if my doctor actually told her, Hey, Amanda, Dan's in great shape. It, it comes across differently as opposed to who the messenger is. Um, so yeah, by all means, we, we'd be happy to come up there and present anytime. I think that'd be great. I missed that one, but okay. And that, uh, so I think that uh, to Catherine's point, uh, we have a competing uh, meeting going on tonight uh, with the school committee and uh, we were invited, but we have to be here for this. I think that uh, I could announce that uh, certainly in the next two or three selectmen's meetings, those people who uh, don't have any competing priorities uh, when they tune in, we can uh, note that this is now on our website. And it was a very good report and we might want to just, you know, um, emphasize the fact that it was done and it's a, uh, it's good reading and that people can go on our website and find it and that, that maybe that'll help get this more widely publicized than it otherwise might. Right. And perhaps we can in some way, shape or form, encourage some feedback um, on yeah. the report. Uh, yes. <laughs> right. I'm not sure the most efficient way to do that right now, but. Well, um, Catherine, good. maybe one of the ways would be to talk, talk up with the uh, local realtors because they're, they're going to be the salesman for this type of information uh, because they're presenting. And given the COVID circumstance, um, the density of population in the metropolitan areas has, has become a very serious concern for people. So I think there's going to be a bigger push to, for people to try to get back into the more rural environments. Time to put my house on the market. <laughs> uh, did I cut somebody off? No, I was just making a joke. Okay, that's usually my job. But anyway, that uh, okay. <laughs> but, um, thank you very much, uh, Michael and uh, 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 Anthony. And that uh, I, I move that we uh, adjourn the meeting. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Catherine. Yes. Aye. Aye. Okay, the meeting is adjourned at uh, five thirty-eight. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Now back to the other meeting. Oh, yeah.